Hundreds of Ukrainian troops from four brigades are trying to hold a vulnerable salient south of Pokrovsk and the town of Selidovo, despite the critical threat of being encircled. As Forbes analyst David Axe writes, this threat has been known for some time and military experts have been advising the Ukrainians to retreat from this area to avoid being encircled, cut off and destroyed. But the Ukrainians in the area are not ready to retreat. Recently, they engaged in a brutal firefight at a key road and rail junction between the stronghold and the main Ukrainian sector in the north and won, the analyst wrote. He notes that the Russians are trying their best to break through to Selidovo, which is a stronghold on the front line between Pokrovsk and Ukrainsk. As the analyst explains, the capture of Selidovo is of utmost importance for both sides. As long as the Ukrainians hold out in the south, they pose a threat to the left flank of the Russian 2nd Combined Arms Army and the 90th Tank Division, the main parts of the local Russian force grouping that are moving towards Pokrovsk. According to the Center for Defense Strategies, over the past week, the Russian command has shifted its focus from a direct offensive on Pokrovsk to an advance toward Selidovo and the surrounding areas in the east and southeast. And if they succeed, it will allow them to advance further toward Pokrovsk and secure the left flank of the forces advancing from the south. At the same time, the Ukrainian defense forces are trying to make sure that the Russians do not succeed and are fighting to maintain a salient south of Pokrovsk in order to maintain a threat to the Russian left flank. The Ukrainians clearly do not want to lose the roads and rails connecting Pokrovsk to Selidovo to Ukrainsk and the adjacent salient as long as they continue to actively fight for Pokrovsk and not just plan a retreat. At least for now, the Ukrainian positions are intact and the roads connecting them are free. For now, Pokrovsk is holding out, as is the entire southern front. Forbes notes. The West's strategy, and the US in particular, to end the war in Ukraine after two and a half years remains the same. Find a middle ground between supporting Ukraine and punishing Russia on the one hand and reducing the risk of escalation on the other. At the same time, writes foreign policy, however, as rational as this approach may seem, it is based on a mistaken assumption that Putin's mind can be changed. The evidence suggests that Putin is simply unconvinced on Ukraine. For him, preventing Ukraine from becoming a bastion that the West can use to threaten Russia is a strategic imperative. He has taken personal responsibility for achieving that outcome and likely believes it is worth almost any price. Trying to force him to give in is a futile exercise that simply wastes lives and resources. The newspaper writes, It is noted that there is only one viable option for ending the war in Ukraine on terms acceptable to the West and Kyiv. Wait out Putin. When Putin ordered the invasion, it was a war of his choosing. There was no urgent threat to Russia's security that would require a large-scale invasion of its neighbor. And because it is a war of choice, Putin has the power to stop it. The war is not existential for Russia. Withdrawing Russian troops from Ukraine would not threaten the existence of the Russian state and would likely not even threaten Putin's own rule. He could easily declare victory in Ukraine and launch an accompanying information campaign to justify his reversal. FP believes. According to the newspaper, Putin's attack on Ukraine is best viewed as an unfair preventive war launched to stop what Putin saw as a future threat to Russia's security. At the same time, it was a surprisingly risky move for Putin, given that he had previously tried to minimize the use of Russian resources. The evidence suggests that on Ukraine, Putin simply cannot be swayed. He is fully committed. FP writes, the publication emphasizes that the fact that the war is so out of step with Putin's usual risk calculation suggests that he has made a strategic decision regarding Ukraine that he is unwilling to back down from. Thus, Western pressure is unlikely to force him to change his mind and end the war on terms acceptable to Kyiv and Washington. If Putin is unwilling to stop his offensive in Ukraine, the war can only end in one of two ways either because Russia has lost the ability to continue its campaign or because Putin is no longer in power. And as FP notes, achieving the first result by degrading Russia's capabilities is unrealistic since Putin can continue to throw soldiers and resources into the fight and the Russian military is unlikely to collapse. This leaves a second way to end the war, Putin's departure from the Kremlin. It is entirely possible that he will leave voluntarily or be forced out. What is certain is that at some point he will die. 
Only when he is no longer in power can the real work of permanently resolving the war in Ukraine begin. The publication concludes. Until then, Washington should focus on helping Ukraine hold the front lines and prevent further Russian military gains and conserve its resources. It's an unsatisfactory and politically unpalatable approach, but it's the only realistic option. Foreign policy says 